Welcome to Inspire Change, a new inspirational and motivational broadcast that strives to empower men in a positive way, designed to educate, empower, and inspire even the busiest individual on the go over that first cup of coffee. Please join me in welcoming Gunter Swoboda, international psychologist, author, speaker, and producer. Welcome, everybody, to another episode. Um, really want to thank everybody who is a regular subscriber and those for the first time again a big warm hearty welcome to inspire change a podcast about how to take a step up in life without necessarily giving yourself a hard time for where you currently are this is all about growth this is all about creating positive and constructive change in your life it's going to have a lasting impact, not just on you, but also your loved ones. And the podcast and the way that I do it is fundamentally aimed at men, but I really enjoy the fact that a lot of women are also participating in this and getting a lot out of it. I think it's fundamentally important that we really get to understand each other outside of the traditional stereotypes about gender. There are, there are no men from Mars and women from Venus. It's a nonsense. Uh, it was a very, very popular book, but that's about all that it really was. And yes, I know some people found it really, really helpful, but a lot of people also didn't. In fact, the majority of people after a while realised that, you know, when men talk about going into the men's shed... Uh, or in their man cave, most of the time they're actually avoiding intimacy. Okay, so enough about that. I'm going to pick up on that topic at another time in a lot more detail. So where do I want to start today? Well, in the last podcast, I talked about laying a foundation, a framework for creating a strategy on dealing with chaos and crisis and uncertainty. I didn't use the word uncertainty in the last session, but it occurred to me in between that's probably a really good word to throw in. So there's this idea somehow in our culture that things should be and stay the same across time. Now, the reality is that that's never going to happen, okay? So, in this particular podcast, I want to give you 10 points uh, as a basic framework about how to cope and how to deal with uncertainty. One of the sayings that often comes up at the moment is, you know, the Chinese have a proverb that says, may you live in interesting times, now, interestingly enough, if you fact check that, it's there's no such Chinese saying. It's actually of Western origin and fairly recently, and it's an ironic observation. Okay, so let me let me talk about this whole idea of dealing with uncontrollable circumstances with chaos and crisis. Um, so, point number one: know yourself. It's really important in building resilience that you understand your cognitive biases, your attitudes, and your beliefs. Check, make sure that they're tested in real life. And how do they impact on you emotionally? It's a really important aspect to understanding in understanding yourself. Point two. I often talk about us as men needing to learn how to be a psychological ninja because our socialisation in terms of this patriarchal framework tends to be really rigid and so we don't actually adapt well because we're not really that flexible. When we look at what comes out of the man box exercise, the issue is that men tend to have a rigid belief in being strong in a particular type of strength, about being stoic, about holding things in, about not expressing emotion. Um, All of those things will actually contribute to you feeling increasingly more stressed, 
distressed and will contribute to symptoms of anxiety and depression, right? Uh, whereas if you begin to practice being a psychological ninja, one of the things that you're going to do is exercise your mind to regulate your emotions because you're going to be flexible, you're going to be adaptable. You know, you're not going to have a vested interest in something that is obviously either untrue, untested, or just completely unknown. Um, which leads me on to the next point, um, point number three, which there is no such thing as certainty. To invest in the idea that there is certainty, you're in for a great big deal of heartache. I have a very firm belief that there is a fundamental limit to what we can know in the moment. The future is a myriad of alternatives, of, of possibilities, of potentials, right? But right here and now, you're only operating with what you've learned from the past and what you understand from that learning about now. Really, really, really important stuff. Um, you know, I've often been asked, you know, how do I plan for the future? Well, work with the possibility that there's going to be alternative realities. Uh, one of the reasons I love science fiction is because it teaches us exactly that. So as you're aware, if you think about my previous podcasts, what I'm talking about here is coming back to the three fundamentals. Understand yourself, so self-awareness, being flexible so you can adapt. And here's the fourth point, build resilience. And as much as I disliked this saying when I was very young, no pain, no gain. What doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Okay, it's really important to embrace that. If you don't, just like if you don't exercise, your body, your muscles will lose strength and bulk, and ultimately your body will be unable to support itself. And that's no different mentally. Bad things happening to us are painful and we need to accept them and we need to learn from them so that we can build that sense of resilience. Point number five, and this is in my book also really, really important. Do not let small things override the big picture. Too many times we get caught up in minutia. And I watch this particularly in business with managers who are micromanagers. You know, they, they, they get a document and they revise it and they have to and they can't help themselves a lot of times change a word or a punctuation. Um, whereas, you know, ultimately in some respects, it's sort of what's it matter? What's the main message? What's, what are we trying to convey in this document? But no, they can't help themselves. They need to fix it up. And I know from writing personally that, you know, good writing is rewriting. But there's a time when I can have three or four of the same version of a document which fundamentally are not necessarily really different. The message is still the same. But I've allowed my basically perfectionist to get in the way and force me to rewrite constantly thinking there's a better way. Ultimately, it's going to interfere with your productivity, okay? And it will stifle progress. It will stifle the journey. Point number six, and this is a classic, don't catastrophize. As I said earlier on, fundamentally, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen in the future, so if I get stuck thinking about the worst case scenario and that will have a major emotional impact on me, I'm going to suffer in some form or another, either from very intense negative emotions or behaviours that are not helpful or I'm going to basically get to a point where I'm so anxious that my capacity to think clearly 
to regulate my emotions as well is going to be impaired. It's just not going to, you know, I'm going to have problems with my short-term memory. I'm going to, you know, challenges with problem solving. And and the most important thing in this is that I'm really going to struggle with making decisions. And so I'll begin to procrastinate. And in a situation where I need to be on top of it, especially if I'm in a leadership role or where my partner's relying on me to engage and consult and be on board with her or him, then I'm just shortchanging everybody, including myself. And, you know, we can we can certainly test whether we're catastrophizing or not. Um you know, from our recent experience with surgery, which was a completely new and uncharted territory for me, there was a temptation at times to go into the space where I felt, okay, I'm going to have to face possibly the worst pain that I've ever felt. Now, I didn't, it wasn't sort of like I got stuck with that idea, but I had to focus on keeping myself grounded in the here and now, now by going, I don't know what's going to happen with the surgery. I don't know how I'm going to react to the anesthesia. I'm not going to know how I'm going to react to the post-operative process. I just don't know. So let me take it one step at a time. Now, one of the good things was that, you know, having a highly specialised team and a team that's very sensitive to you, the anaesthetist and his assistant essentially took me under their wing from the time they rolled me towards the, you know, the the operation, um, the surgical ward, and, and they talked me through it. You know, they explained exactly what was going to happen and, you know, and it was comforting. One, because it distracted me from going into the what ifs, which is a real problem, and, and, and dealing with something that I have no evidence for. And we need to do that with everything else as well in life. We need to just, you know, pull our shoestrings up and go, you know, let's just keep this in check. Now, sometimes it's useful to go, okay, what's the worst case scenario? But not get stuck with it. Okay. So leading on from that is we need to, as point seven, start to prepare for alternatives because they're always generally are alternatives. And those alternatives can be intellectual, they can be emotional, they can be in our behaviour, they can be in making changes. Sometimes we just need to be flexible enough to go, I need to ditch this and I need to move on. Part of that might be because if you're in a toxic workplace, for example, you might need to leave. Now, there could be compelling reasons why you may decide not to, but then you need to look at how you're going to cope. Now, let me start wrapping this into the whole, how do I deal with the uncertainty and the ongoingness of COVID-19 and what's going on? So if you think about all these points about having a very particular strategy and approach, then you're going to be a lot more flexible, a lot more nimble. I came out of hospital straight into a lockdown. Now I wasn't going to go anywhere anyway, so I was prepared. I just went, yeah, okay. You know, for the first week, two weeks, I was going to be stuck pretty well at home anyway, recuperating. Now, that necessarily didn't happen because, thankfully, with gratitude, my recovery was fairly quick, but I still had to you know, work out that there was a six-week period in which I could not do any form of strenuous exercise. I had some exercises to do from the physio, but there was not a great deal of stuff I could do. I couldn't go for a swim. I really was still a bit too fatigued to go out for a walk, and I certainly wasn't going to go into any crowded places. So we need that framework to cope with this because we really don't know how long this is going to go for this estimates if we're smart we follow the rules we socially isolate if we have symptoms we get tested and then we quarantine until we get the results simple they knew this during the bubonic plague towns that shut themselves off from the rest of the world did better than those that didn't it's a no-brainer The other part here is that we need to exercise emotional intelligence.